Well, thank you everyone for coming out to this session. The Independent Senators Group has been meeting for the last two and a half days to prepare for the 43rd Parliament. As we speak, uh, our colleagues are in a meeting to get a refresher on some of the rules of the Senate. In addition, we've been talking about what might be some of the legislation that we can expect in the uh, weeks and months ahead. But most importantly, we've been talking about how we can advance the reform and modernization of the Senate so that it's a more independent, less partisan chamber. And there are two areas in particular that we're very focused on. The first is to ensure that there is equality of senators and equality of Senate. Shall we? Uh, sure. The first is to focus on the equality of senators and equality of Senate groups. And the second priority on the modernization and reform agenda is to have a better functioning of the Senate and reform of the organization so that we can reduce the amount of dilatory practices, waste of time, and gamesmanship, partisan gamesmanship that has uh, slowed down and which has uh, obstructed the work of the Senate. We're available for your questions now and I look forward to responding to them. Can you be more specific? You're talking about uh, finding better ways of making the Senate function. What do you have in mind? Well, first of all, we saw in the last parliament that there were many instances of uh, debate and deliberation on government bills where we took an inordinate amount of time to uh, deal with those legislations, not because we were active in debate, but because we were doing nothing. Long periods of time pass between debates on particular bills. There's also the problem of the use of uh, procedural tactics to avoid debate uh, and to uh, delay the process of coming to a decision. I remember vividly uh, one sitting where we started at the usual time around 2 p.m. Uh, by 11 p.m. we were still on the first item of the order paper, not because we were debating, and deliberating, and trying to come to a decision, but because we were listening to the bells ring uh, through the use of um, tactics to adjourn the Senate. So how would you go about avoiding all these things? Do you have a specific change of uh, procedural rules in mind that would avoid all that? Well, this is something for the Senate to discuss, uh, and I won't prejudge what the solution will be, but I want to be very clear on what the problem is. The problem is dilatory practices. The problem is excessive partisan gamesmanship, which all leads to a uh, unproductive and wasteful use of Senate time and resources. There clearly are solutions that can be put in place. I'll leave that for when we resume Parliament and are able to have these discussions with our colleagues. Um, you would need just a majority to change the rules? Well, what I can say is that I believe there is a majority of senators, not just in the independent senators group, but in the chamber as a whole, that would like to see a better functioning of the Senate, the reduction and perhaps elimin elimination of dilatory tactics, and certainly a reduction in the excessive partisan gamesmanship that we saw in the last parliament. Okay, and on the, on the equality of Senate groups, what do you mean by that exactly, and what, what are you looking for? The current Senate is structured along the lines of a government opposition dichotomy. There's a duopoly of power, and there is written into the Parliament of Canada Act uh, a privileged status given just to the government and the opposition, when the reality of the new Senate is, first of all, that the overwhelming majority of senators are not part of either the government or the opposition, and secondly, that there is now more than one group of senators that identifies as being independent and not tied to a political party caucus. The reality has not yet been matched by the statute 
or by a number of rules of the Senate which continue to give privilege and status and special standing to the government and opposition. So what we mean by equality of senators and Senate groups is the need to change the rules and statutes and other practices that entrench this duopoly, duop uh, duopoly of power and privilege. Well, the Parliament of Canada Act uh, specifically mentions and gives status to just the government opposition. That is in many ways the defining statute for the Senate. Uh, that has to be changed. The Prime Minister has already said uh, as part of the Liberal election platform that he will change it. We're looking forward to specific mention of this item in the speech on the throne. Uh, would you consider initiating it from the Senate? Uh, for a variety of reasons, that bill really should start in the House of Commons because there are some, uh, there are some Treasury implications, some money involved, and uh, it should properly start from the House of Commons. I'm optimistic that the government, uh, the Prime Minister, who has already made this promise, will follow through, but we'll be watching very closely to see if it happens. Why would money be involved? in the last session that you felt used these practices too much? Yes, the Conservatives used this practice. Uh, there's clear evidence of it in the uh, Hansard, uh, and we felt that it was um, not a good use of Senate time uh, and that it reflects badly on the Senate as a whole. We are not against, by any means, not against um, the need for debate, thorough debate, exhaustive debate. But if you are spending your time uh, sitting in the chamber or in your offices, waiting for the bells to stop, that's not a good use of Senate time. Well, do you not worry, though, that if you eliminate any of these tactics, that a future government could railroad over the Senate without regard? Could any future government railroad the Senate in what way? Well, I mean, they're pushing through a piece of legislation that senators might object to, but, you know, the, you've eliminated all of the tactics by which uh, senators could delay uh, that bill. No, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that at all. The job of the Senate is to review government legislation and to come to a decision on it. It is our fundamental purpose for being senators. What we are calling for is a more orderly process, one which allows debate to take place fully and thoroughly, and which allows senators, above all, to prepare themselves to debates in a way that makes more sense. You, it, you cannot properly prepare for a debate if speeches take place months apart from each other, if you have a, uh, a planning process which allows for some sense of when debates might take place on which bills, senators, in fact, will be able to perform even better than under the old system. Yes. So as the, there's a new parliament, but how do you see the first few months of this new parliament going? I mean, those changes, the law won't change immediately. How do you see the coming months going in the current context with three or four uh, official groups? Well, we wait for government legislation to come forward. Of course, it will take some time when government legislation comes. That's our top priority, and we will have to deal with them. In the meantime, there will be a relatively light order paper, I believe. That's an opportunity for us to talk about how we can reform the Senate and improve the functioning so that, as I say, there is less obstructionism, there's less dilatory practices, and there's less gamesmanship. But do you see committees changing? Do you see the... Oh, yes. <clears throat> so what do you want to see in terms of changes to the processes in place? Well, there are lots of routine items that have to be dealt with in the Senate when we resume, such as the formation of committees. That's a function of a negotiations process that will begin soon enough, and I cannot predict the outcome. But we already have the rules around how committees should be formed, which is that they are based on proportionality in the Senate. And everyone here can do the math as to what the proportion should be. And we are looking forward to the proper allocation of um, senators to committees based on their memberships in the various groups. If, if um, the Conservatives, I mean, could obstruct any changes to the rules, is that possible that you, you're not going to be able to get past them to change the rules to of prevent course. them from obstructing? Of course. Well, first of all, I, I'm going to appeal to, to reason and common sense and uh, a belief in the future of the Senate and the credibility and legitimacy of the Senate. All of us want that, uh, whichever side we belong to. I want to stress that very strongly. And I believe 
that the case can be made that many of these changes are about a better functioning Senate. It's not about a Senate that favors one party or the other. Indeed, as independents, we're specifically trying to put forward changes that are non-partisan so that we can have a more independent Senate. But you know that the Conservatives view their role as being opposition to the government, and so if they can't prevent a bill from passing, or from, uh, you know, then they just delay a vote on it or prevent a vote on it, and they see that as a legitimate tool for the official opposition in the Senate to use. So how do you get past that to change the rules to prevent the it? The government opposition dichotomy is indeed a legitimate uh, dichotomy in the House of Commons. I think we have uh, come far enough now to, to recognize that the Senate should not operate in that way. That certainly is my very strong belief. And I would say that that uh, is also the shared belief of a vast majority of Canadians. Opinion polls have shown that 80% of Canadians support both the new process for selecting senators and support the appointment of senators who are not affiliated to political but parties. But the question is, how can you overcome the opposition of... Yeah. Just to Quickly. follow... Just to over... Yeah. I'll finish this and I'll come yeah. to you. I promise you. that. Yeah. Uh, mm. How do you overcome the opposition of Conservatives to this reform if they see this as a legitimate role? For well, them? first of all, I really would appeal to uh, public opinion and Conservative base even to, uh, to uh, argue the case that these are the right reforms to make. And uh, I want to start with that because this is not about a power play necessarily. It's about doing the right thing for the Senate. But uh, if there is obstinate... Um, resistance to these reforms, and we'll have to look at all options that are available to us. Yes? Uh, two points, if I can. On your uh, process, the Senate hasn't rejected a government bill in over 20 years. The Senate, as a body, works a three-day work week. I understand you may find it tedious when Senator Platt wants to adjourn debate, but I don't grasp your case that the hard-working, diligent, tireless Senate mm -hmm. is just being stopped from passing bills while you quit on Thursdays? I'm, there are multiple questions in that one. One has to do with um, whether or not senators work hard enough. The second one has to do with uh, the, the work week, and the third one has to do with uh, whether or not bills have been rejected by the Senate. I think it is... Uh, something that we should be proud of, or at least uh, we should recognize that it is not the job fundamentally to defeat government bills. And so I don't see any uh, dishonor in the fact that, as you say, we have not defeated government bills, just two, I believe, in the recent history. So there's nothing to be ashamed of that. But we take our role very seriously when it comes to careful scrutiny debate, review, and oftentimes amendments to government bills. And I will remind all of you that in the last parliament, we had a record number of amendments proposed by this Senate. And more than that, 60% of, I believe it was mm, nearly 300 amendments that were proposed, 60% of those amendments were accepted by the government. So we're very proud of the role we've played, not just in debating and spending time in the chamber, but actually proposing improvements to government legislation. On legislation, uh, Senator, you read the <coughs> Liberal platform. You anticipate <coughs> a bill that it will impose an equity tax on foreign non-resident owners of real estate. You've opposed this. What do you think of the Liberal proposal? Uh, I'm not going to comment on legislation. It hasn't arrived I'm in our chamber. Comment on the Liberal uh, platform. Uh, my purpose in this press conference is to talk about uh, Senate reform and modernization until and unless legislation arrives in our chamber, it's premature to be pronouncing my views and certainly not the views of my group Can or I any such legislation. I, I, ju just, I just wanted to ask you whether you've seen her letter of apology and on, in addition to the letter she put out yesterday mm -hmm. outlining how she's fulfilled all the other requirements. Mm -hmm. Is that sufficient in your view? Have you seen the letter of apology and, and is it I've enough? looked at it very superficially. I have no comment on her letter except to say that we have established a process whereby the uh, Committee on Conflict of Interest and Ethics will 
uh, reconvene. They will provide, they will, they will deliberate and prepare a compliance report on whether Senator Bayek has in fact met those five tests. And until that report comes out, there's really nothing more to be said. Can I just go back to what you were saying about caucus equality? You mentioned that you would like to see the proposal coming from the House because it involves a money um, consideration. Yes. Why do you say that? So why do you, what do you have in mind that would it entail some spending? Uh, I'm referring specifically only to the Parliament of Canada Act, which has provisions for stipends that are provided right now to both the government leader leadership team and the opposi opposition leadership team. That is really the least important part of the changes that are needed. Mm -hmm. It is about recognition of groups other than the government of opposition. But what would you see in terms of money, money-wise, for the other groups, such as your... Uh, well, there should be equality. There should be equality uh, among all groups in terms of any stipend, if any, that is to be provided to uh, the leaderships of those groups. And those details obviously have to be worked out by the government in consultation with others. But the key issue here is recognition. And if we have an Act of Parliament defining Senate, uh, which only mentions government and opposition, when in fact the Senate is already constituted of a majority of a vast majority of senators who are not government or, of, or opposition, something is dreadfully amiss. Do you think, I mean, this coming Senate, we've got a minority parliament. This coming Senate, we've got new caucuses. We've got more independent caucuses. Is it going to be difficult to move legislation through parliament both the House and the Senate, with so much, you know, up in the air, I guess. I wouldn't speak for the House. Uh, uh, they can speak for themselves very well, I'm sure. Uh, in terms of senators, the way I look at it personally is that my job has not changed. Uh, I will look at bills in exactly the same way that I did under the previous uh, majority situation, where there are problems with bills. I will raise them. Uh, in the most appropriate venues where amendments may be required, I will propose them. Uh, but there's no question that all of us are sensitive to the fact that the House of Commons is now in a minority situation and that any bills that do come to the Senate may have been the product of prior uh, consultations and uh, compromises, and I'm sure all senators will be taking that into account. I mean, I think with, with the government passing bills through a minority legislation, making compromises, as you say, they may be less likely to want to make compromises again when a bill comes to the Senate. Do you think that's going to be a challenge for the Senate? That's possible, and that's something we have to take into consideration. Regarding the dilatory motions, uh, I was under the impression that some of those motions were intended to bring the ISG to the negotiation table in order to negotiate timelines between groups and that your group did not play ball with that. On the contrary. In fact, uh, Senator Platt is on record saying that he did not consider the independent senators group to be a legitimate partner in negotiations that would only negotiate with the government. Speaking on the independent yes. senator, I've consulted your voting record. I cannot find an instance, not one, where you voted against a government bill or a private liberal bill that went to the Senate. Was there any instance? Uh, if your test of a successful Senate is in the number of bills sure. that are defeated by no, the Senate. my question is, are you an independent who just agrees with the Liberals 100% of the time? I'm an independent who scrutinizes bills thoroughly and who finds different ways in which to express my difference of opinion. The arc of legislative review is not just a vote at the end of third reading. It is second reading debates, it is committee hearings, it is uh, press conferences, it is outreach to the public, and it is amendments as well. And I think the record will show that I have raised concerns on all bills, or certainly the bills that I've spoken on, in a variety of stages of the bill's progress through Parliament. If you were to take third reading vote as the simple test for Senate's success and viability, then your logical conclusion would be that most government bills have to be defeated in order for you to consider the Senate a success. And that would obviously be an absurd statement. No, Senator, I, I, I'm Thank you, last claim of nonpartisanship. <coughs> Forget about the Senate. Uh, it, it, when you stand and say, I'm 100% nonpartisan, I'm 100% independent, I just never disagree with a liberal bill. And I can't find an instance, I'm getting the impression from you, there was none. The definition of uh, nonpartisan has to do with not being tied to the uh, 
political party, particularly on the House side, and taking orders from that political party. Nonpartisanship also means not making decisions on bills and other items in the Senate, in the Senate that are based on electoral calculations. Of course, all of us have political views, you, and we would vote based on political and ideological and philosophical views. But the important thing about a more independent Senate is that we are not tied to political parties. We do not take instructions from the leader of the government or the leader of the opposition or any leader in the House side so that we can take a longer view of legislation, one which not necessarily aligns with the, pol with the political party that one might otherwise be uh, predisposed towards. Thank you, I th thank you very much. Thank you.